पेज नंबर वन चैप्टर नंबर वन इंडियन मिडिल क्लास अ सोसाइटी एज वी ऑल नो अ सोसाइटी इज अ ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल इन्वॉल्व इन द परसिस्टेंट सोशल कोलेबोरेशन और अ लार्ज सोशल ग्रुप शेयरिंग द सेम टोपोग्राफिकल और सोशल टेरिटरी टिपिकली सब्जेक्ट टू द सेम पॉलिटिकल अथॉरिटी एंड गवर्निंग कल्चरल एक्सपेक्टेशन थ्री मेजर फैक्टर्स डिसाइड द पोजिशन ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल इन सोसाइटी क्लास अ पर्सन फाइनेंशियल पोजिशन इन सोसाइटी स्टेटस अ पर्सन प्रेस्टीज सोशल ऑनर और पॉपुलरिटी इन सोसाइटी पावर अ पर्सन कैपेसिटी टू गेट देर वे डिस्पाइट द ऑपोजिशन ऑफ अदर्स Let's try to understand. Social class is a set of instinctively defined concepts in the political sciences and social theory, centered on models of social stratification, in which people are grouped into sets of hierarchical social categories. The typical three-layer model. Concepts of social class often assume. Three general categories: upper class is poised of those who are well-born, rich, powerful, or combination of those. In some countries, wealth alone is sufficient to count people in upper class. Some places only people who are born or married into certain upper class ancestors are considered as members of upper class. This class is generally contained within the richest 1 or 2% of the total population. Members of upper class are often distinguished by immense wealth which is passed on from generation to generation as in the form of estates. They usually wield the greatest political power. Middle class is the most argued of three categories. They are the broad group of people in contemporary society who fall according to their socio-economic condition in between lower and upper classes. Workers from middle classes are sometimes called white-collar workers. A substantial healthy and wealthy middle class can be viewed as characteristic of a healthy society. Lower class is often described as working class they are those people who have very little economic securities and are employed in low paying wage jobs consequences of class position a person's socio economic class has all embracing effects it can impact their health the job open to them whom they may marry the school they able to attend the treatment by the police politics and the courts education upon the person's educational opportunities his or her social class has a significant influence upper class parents are able to send their children to exclusive schools that are perceived to be better than state supported schools for children state supported schools are supposed to be for children of middle and lower class parents health and nutrition a person's social class has a notable impact on their physical health ability to receive adequate medical care nutrition and their life expectancy middle class people experience a wide range of health problems as a result of their economic condition and status they are unable to use health care as often and when they do it is of lower quality middle class families have higher rates of infant mortality cancer cardiovascular disease and disabling physical injuries indian middle class and ways of living Indian middle class offers astounding variety of virtually every aspect 
of social life, diversities of ethnic, linguistic, regional, economic, religious, class and caste groups across cut Indian society in this class. Themes in Indian middle class Hierarchy Whether in South India or North India, Muslim or Hindus, urban or village, virtually all spheres have people and social groups ranked according to various indispensable qualities. The Indian middle class follows a hierarchical society. Individuals are ranked according to their prosperity and power. For example, some influential people or Bada Admi, big or wealthy men, sit confidently on chairs, while Chota Admi means small or poor men came before them to make request either standing or squatting not presuming to sit besides a man of higher social status as an equal in the indian middle class household lines of hierarchy and authority are clearly drawn the ideals of conduct help maintain family harmony all members of family accept the authority of those above them. The eldest male acts as a family head and his wife supervises other female members of the family. The youngest family member has the least authority. In return, those in authority accept responsibility for meeting the needs of other family members. Formal respect is accorded by family members as for example, a wife shows respect to her husband, to all senior in-laws, to all daughters of the house. Siblings do recognize age difference with younger siblings addressing older siblings by respectful terms rather than by name. Family trustworthiness is a deeply held ideal and family unity is emphasized, especially in distinction to those outside the kinship circle. Social interdependence One of the great themes pervading Indian middle class life is social interdependence. People are born into groups, families, clans, castes, subcastes and religious communities where they feel a deep sense of inseparability from these groups. For many people, the largest fear is the possibility of being left alone without social or community support. To avoid this, they are deeply involved with each other. Psychologically, also family members typically experience intense emotional interdependence. Economic activities too are deeply embedded in the social interconnection. Through a multitude of kinship ties, each person is linked with kin in villages and towns near and far. Almost everywhere a person goes, he or she can find a relative from whom she or he can expect moral and practical support. Social ties can help an individual in every activity and in absence of them can bring failure. Rarely do people carry out even the simplest tasks on their own. When a small child eats, his mother puts the food into his mouth with her own hand. A student hopes that the influential relative or a friend can facilitate his college admission. When a girl brings water home from the well in pots on her head, someone helps her to unload the pots. In a arranged marriage scenario, a young person anticipates that his or her parents will arrange his or her marriage. 
Finally, a dying person expects the friends and relatives to conduct their last journey funeral rites in a proper manner, ensuring their own smooth passage to the next stage of existence and reaffirming social ties among minerals. This sense of interdependence leads into a spiritual realm. From birth onwards, a child learns that his fate has been written by divine forces and his life is shaped by powerful divine force with whom an ongoing relationship must be maintained. In Hindi, they call it Bhakt Se Bhagwan Ka Rishta. Varna, caste and class. Although social disparity exists throughout the world, nowhere the inequality has been so extravagantly constructed as in the Indian system of caste, which merges with class. The existence of caste system is from many centuries, from the ancient period, but in the modern period it has been severely criticized and is undergoing significant reform and changes. Varna is a division of masses on the basis of color, which in turn classifies castes. In these castes, membership is achieved by birth and through marriage. There are thousands of castes and sub-castes in India, involving hundreds of millions of people. In Indian terms, sometimes caste is translated as Jati, Jat, Viradri, Varna and Samaj. Many castes are associated with customary occupations such as carpenters, leather workers, butchers, priests, potters, launderers and barbers. The so-called untouchables were traditionally relegated to polluting tasks. In higher ranking castes, the members tend to be more prosperous than low ranking caste members. Indians live in villages where affiliation of caste and class overlap. Large landlords are overwhelmingly upper class and small scale farmers are middle class. While landless laborers typically belong to lowest ranking castes. Defining India's middle class on the socio-economic landscape, a middle class household is commonly expected to own a telephone, a scooter or motorcycle, if not a car and a television. The size of Indian middle class. According to National Council for Applied Economic Research, that is NCAER, India's middle class population was 267 million approximately. In 2016, one survey shows that the middle class is going to comprise 41% of total population within next few years, roughly defined as a group with a household income between INR 20,000 and INR 10,000. India has been ranked among the 10th wealthiest countries globally with a total individual wealth of $5,200 billion. Factors for rising middle class Education is wealth. The key element in the rise of Indian middle class in education. Right education is the only key to success and to improve the quality of life. For a middle class student, education is a ticket to better employment prospects and higher salaries, thus eventually translating into ability to uplift the entire family. Thus, with education becoming focal point of middle class society, 
most parents do not hesitate to spend more on their children's education. Earlier, after completing 10 plus 2, the options for graduation was only medicine, engineering and preparation for government jobs such as in the field of banking or civil services. There was a sense of particular tone with which middle class Indians talked about their careers and lifestyle, a strange sense of purpose. We just did this because we had to. We had to do it for our parents because they wanted a stable job and a safe option for them. For an elusive thing called financial security. Now the world has changed for students. Subject choice in 11th and 12th standard is based on personality and aptitude tests, not what parents wanted. Although in some cases, parental pressure is still prevailing. Now, there are career counseling workshops at school. The rise of middle class was noticed as a phenomenon in the late 80s and through the following periods as a factor a light to the information technology revolution in the country. After 10 plus 2, the two prime educational opportunities, engineering and medicine, has become too expensive for the ordinary man to dream of. Aptech, NIIT, NIT and such institutions mushroomed across the country with a promise of lucrative career to any graduate who enrolled. These courses could be taken on alongside traditional curriculum. Now we have numerous career options after graduation like management, hospitality, computer, information technology, etc. Many of them didn't even exist a few years ago. Thanks to privatization and globalization of Indian economy, this advent was possible. Management studies are hot and very trendy career option in Indian middle class. With India taking the lead as the world's IT hub, young tech professionals soon started going overseas and earning big money. With money came the need for investment, mutual funds, retail equity trade, non-banking financial instruments and insurance sector saw a phenomenal growth at this time. The consumerist culture of the country was in its best performance. Significant growth in disposable income and credit culture put mobile phones, televisions, automobiles, entertainment options and real estate well within the reach of masses, thus stimulating demand. This is a reason that in India today, among this class, there are an increasing number of young people switching college or course or taking gap years or dropping out of college. There are people who have taken a new path, worked in consulting companies, IT sector or business and are loving it. There are also people who took conventional paths for pursuing the high paying job, business degree and hated it. There are many people who are still finding their passion, where are those who follow their passion and it proves lucrative. Great expectations. The new age Indian middle class includes wealthy farmers, business and professional people, military personnel and white collar workers all enjoying reasonable incomes, decent homes, and educated and healthy children. Most own telephones and televisions, and many possess cars and computers. A large number of them have close ties with prosperous relatives living abroad, an affluent middle class who are now progressively dictating the country's economic and political direction 
is the biggest development in our country. But the big growth in India is the rapid expansion of a prosperous middle class, increasingly dictating the country's political and economic direction. According to IMF report, for the second straight year, the Indian economy has registered a growth rate of 7.5%, even as the global economy slowed down to the growth rate of 3.3%. India has now surpassed its neighbor China with an economic growth rate 6.8% and become one of the fastest growing economies in the world. As per various reports and studies, the trend is likely to continue over the next eight years as India shall have advantage growth rate of 7.9%. Not only will India's economic growth depend on growing middle class, but also India's role as service and manufacturing hub of the world will be fueled by this segment. Economically, this group will therefore command much power over the decade to come. A changing political landscape. Earlier, a political movement, Mandal Commission, has been initiated with the target of a large percentage of the middle class, low ranking class which is known as children of God by the father of the nation and in modern day the politically correct term for these groups is Dalit and scheduled tribes. With money, awareness and education came a political consciousness. The middle class started to stir up and awaken to the country's political scenario. Middle class is now the most significant vote bank in the country. The one that no aspiring political country can afford to ignore or neglect. With money, they are considered the biggest consumer market. Aware of this effect, the class now has a political demand. The latent power of this class became manifest in its overwhelming support for the 2011 anti-corruption revolution led by Anna Hazari. The growth of political parties like BJP at this time, which was forced to shed its old avatar to gain acceptance in the new pro-middle class one. Aam Aadmi Party owes its creation to this class. In 2012, we witnessed the protest over Nirbhaya case where lakhs of people took to the streets in different parts of country, demanding security for women. Most of them can be inferred to belong to middle class. The Congress, which ignored these visible signals, was shunted out of power in the 2014 Lok Sabha elections, since its ascendance to power at the center. The NDA government's policies Campaigns, few schemes like Janadhan Yojana, Ujwal Yojana, budget trends and skill development programs are clearly targeting this group. The great new Indian middle class, it seems it's slowly emerging as one of the most powerful sections of the changing political landscape of the nation. This seismic shift is bringing lots of changes in the society in terms of quality of life, urbanization, purchasing power, inflation, the level of education, the number of consumer goods, etc. Rishabh, at his age of 39, realizes how true it is. Now he went into a flashback. It was the year 1991. He was preparing for his class 10th board exam. He was a student of a government high school in Goda, a small town in Jharkhand, India. The basic difference between government school students and private convent school students is communication. 
and communication always is a symbol of status. If you are fluent in English communication, then you are considered very intelligent, sophisticated, and you have edge over other students. But if you compare teachers, then you will come to know that subject knowledge wise, government school teachers have always an upper hand over private school teachers. Rishabh was a good student. His father got transferred from Deghar to Goda. That's why he had to change his school from Deghar. And his father was a teacher in the same school. So he had a pressure to perform well. Rishabh still remembers his final exam days. Those days exams were conducted away from home center. So being a ward of a teacher, he had a privilege of being monitored by the staff of that center where he was taking his final board exam. Every one hour, one staff used to come and check his answer sheet and motivate him to write down all the answers fast. It was last day of the exam. The paper was physics. Only 10 minutes were left for the final bell. One staff, Thakurji, had come and started evaluating answer sheet of Rishabh. He said, Hey son, your last answer is wrong. Your method is different from others. Correct it, otherwise you will lose 15 marks. Despite his repeated appeals, Rishabh just refused to listen to him and handed over his sheet to examination controller. Before coming out from examination center, this news had reached his father. And while coming out from the center, he found his father and grandfather were in front of him to receive him at the main gate. Without uttering any word, his father gave a tight slap on his cheek and then said, You want to become Raja Harish Chandra or what? Just lost 15 marks? I don't know what this guy wants to prove. Rishabh came home. Nobody was talking to each other. He went to bed at midnight. At 2.30 a.m., someone came to his home and everybody was there on the balcony. Rishabh heard it was Thakur sir and he was telling his father, Hey sir, we did a mistake. Your son was right. The answer to that question can be solved through that method also. After leaving Thakur sir, Rishabh's grandfather started scolding Rishabh's father for slapping him without knowing the facts. And his father feels sorry for that. Carrying a small smile on his face, Rishabh went into deep sleep. That was the day and after that, his father never said anything to him. This incident taught Rishabh to always believe in yourself. You know yourself better than anyone else. Then the day of announcement of results came. Rishabh got very good marks in his board exam. And now the actual dilemma came. 10 plus 2 is always a foundation for future career perspective. Everybody wanted him to opt science and that to biology as the main paper. Rishabh was very good in mathematics, but he had to choose everybody wanted at least one doctor from the family and Rishabh was chosen for that work. Now in college, the tussle started between students of government school and convent passouts. Devgur College was one of the best colleges of Jharkhand and everybody wanted to get admission in that college. On the first day, Rishabh was late. His lectures were supposed to start at 3.30 p.m. and he reached the college at 3.25 p.m. With dissection box in one hand for biology class and from another hand he was balancing his cycle. 
he saw a bunch of girls coming from the front and he forgot everything. His balance went for a toss and within a fraction of a second, Rishabh was on the ground with his cycle, was away from him. All the girls were laughing at him. So the very first day he became a laughing stock for them. The journey begins. These two years were the best years for him. From being a laughing stock to one of the best students, he worked hard. One very interesting incident happened during physics lecture. One day, lecture was going on and lecturer had given one question for a test. That was a formula to prove equation of motion. Rishabh solved this fast and produced it in front of the lecturer and in return he got a taunt. Hey, this boy from government school solved it so easily and you guys from convent school are not able to do it? What a shame! Perception and predetermined notion that convent is the best. The battle started. Class and Division Rishabh joined the hostel. Hostel life always teaches you a lot. Coming from the moderate middle class family, he always wanted to focus on his study and his goal. But this is India and you can't stay away from controversies. It was a rainy day. He opened his door and found a very strange mark on his door. Surprisingly, it was on every room's door. He was unable to understand this marking system and was trying to analyze when he heard a big chaos outside the hostel. It was Ramanji, his senior fighting with others. All the junior and senior students were there. Everybody was silent and Ramanji was shouting. Rishabh also went there and then he got the answer of marking puzzle. This marking was done by Ramanji. It was for showing how many upper caste students and how many lower caste students are there in the hostel. Room wise marking. A mandal effect. Rishabh was speechless. Once he asked his grandfather why this chaos on mandal commission? What will happen to the talented people? What is this upper caste, lower caste issue? His grandfather replied, See Rishabh, God has made only two divisions, trees and animals. Within animals, there are us, human beings and other animals. And within humans, we have male and female as a subcategory. But we have created so many categories within ourselves on the basis of caste, economic condition, religion, work and even on skin color. This creation leads to a big gap within society and we need to bridge the gap. This Mandal Commission recommendation was a tool for that. But the way it is getting implemented is now only for politics. For the betterment, we need to work on the grassroots area. It seems like today's politicians only want to work on their vote bank and not for betterment of society. Other opposition parties want to use it as a hate tool. So if you want to contribute something for the betterment of the society, just remove this hate tool from your mind. Work hard on your talent. Remember, talent never goes waste. Hey, I have marked every door, stating how many lower caste and upper caste students are in this hostel. Everybody has to listen to me. Nobody should dare to remove marking from his door. This was dictated by Ramanji. The crowd was dispersed. The meeting was over. Rishabh, what are you doing? Ramanji shouted fanatically. 
Everybody was shocked. Rishabh was removing the mark from the door. Ramanji started yelling at him. The situation became very tense. 30 to 40 students were there, a mix of senior and junior. Nobody had guts to say anything against Ramanji. But this guy Rishabh, junior most and justifying the dictate of a senior was absolutely unacceptable. After removing Mar, Rishabh came in front of Ramanji. You belong to an upper caste, that's why I haven't slapped you. Otherwise, you want to become a hero or what? Ramanji asked. Sir, we are here away from our family. All these students are our family. We have to live with them. And within the family, no one is upper caste or lower caste. This is my belief. And regarding slapping me, just think you are a senior. And if you slap me, no issue. This will not harm my prestige. But if in return I slap you then? Rishabh reverted coolly. Pin drop silence. Rishabh just left that place. That day, he implemented learnings from his grandfather's basic theory of human life. All are equal. Next day, after the last incident on Mandal issue, Rishabh warned many friends. All was well until evening when all of a sudden he got a call from a warden who wanted to see him. He went to meet warden and to his surprise his uncle and his father were there. Rishab got a clue that the previous day's news had reached his father. So now he had to prepare himself for the next bomb. His father told him, Don't worry, your senior can't harm you. We discussed with warden sir and now we are shifting you with one senior most student, Mahesh ji. Rishabh was nothing to say as this was a type of veto. So he, Rishabh has nothing to say as this was a type of veto. So his room was changed, routine was changed. There were few rules of Mahesh ji. Rule 1. Wake up early at 3.30 a.m. After having bath and doing a daily activity, worshipping God was compulsory. Rule 2. No knowledge allowed in the room. Rule 3. Only study, no films. Complete censorship on life in short. This was the twist. Rishabh started living this life, but within one month he realized it was enough. He needed to free himself. Let's break the rule. Those days, one Hindi movie was in the talk for the new actress Divya Bharti and new sensational actor Shah Rukh Khan. It was playing house full in theatres. Extra shows were organized and there was a bunch of few students who watched this movie more than 18 times. That too mostly the night shows. These guys just left the hostel at 8.30 p.m. and came back 1 a.m. It was like a regular routine for them. Mahesh ji, who followed his routine very religiously, started filling a pinch. Two rules broken in one shot. Rule 3 and Rule 1. If someone is coming at 1 a.m. in this room, it disturbs his room partner's routine also. Mahesh ji had to open the door and once the sleep is disturbed, then he was not able to have proper sleep. And due to this, he started to find difficulties in following his time schedule. But Rishabh was not stopped there. He still remembers his egg party inside his room and Mahesh ji phoned his father to come. His father receives lots of complaints with one long dialogue. Forget the first division. If your son even passes the 10 plus 2 exam, 
he will climb the mountain Everest. Middle class again came into the picture. Like any other normal Indian father, Rishabh's father also started worrying about his future. He was thinking, what if Rishabh failed in the academic exam? Then what will happen to his family's prestige? Rishabh, what is this? Why are you doing all this and ruining your life? His father asked. Dad, first thing, whatever I am doing is not wrong. If I don't like to get up 3.30 a.m., then what's the big deal? If I don't like to pray to God by force, then what's the problem? And if, and if I love non-witch, then is it a big issue? And believe me, if I fail, I will not come back home. Now after this, his father told him, Okay, I will not force you. And we have faith in you. You know your own good and bad. So go ahead and prepare for the exam. Time flew and the result day arrived. It was ironic that the same bunch of friends were there together watching the movie Zanjeer. When they got the news that the results of 10 plus 2 are out and passing percentage is only 25%, what a shocker! It was 7.30 p.m. when all these musketeers came to college straight from theater and stood in the queue for knowing their results. Out of 10 friends, all 9 confirmed that they have passed the exam with the different grades. Now it was Rishabh's turn. What was store for him? The 10 plus 2 results are supposed to be the decider for his future and his career. Is he going to become a doctor? Because he has to qualify 10 plus 2, that too with first grade, and only then he would be eligible for participating in the competitive test for getting admission in a good medical college. He asked office boy, please tell me what happened to my result. The office boy told him, Please come tomorrow and collect your mark sheet. You will come to know. It was such a long night. Next morning at 10 a.m. He was in his college. He collected his mark sheet and caught the bus to his hometown. From last night to till he reached his home, his father had called him more than 50 times to know the result. He reached home. His father was there and after seeing him from the balcony, he came to open the door and immediately asked what happened. Rishabh was silent. Nothing came out from his mouth. He just asked for a glass of water from his mother. Now his father anticipated that something was wrong and forgetting all his anger, he started consoling Rishabh. Don't worry son, we will work hard for next year. Right now you are very young. You have a long way to go. Now Rishabh started laughing and said, Dad, not only did I climb Mount Everest, I also created a world record. He passed with first class first. That's called guts. Knowing your strength, others' perception does not matter. All that matters is how much you know yourself. The 10 plus 2 over. Now Ray's medical entrance exam had started. Rishabh left Devgar and came to Patna for preparation. Here he realized the actual gap even he had passed out from a good college. But then also he was way behind the other students. He had to compete with students from all over India and with all other boards like CBSC, ICSC and all state boards. In CBSC board, students started using 
NCERT books right after 10th and the students like Rishabh started using NCERT books after passing out 10 plus 2 exams. So two year preparation gap was there from the start. A student life, value of guidance, time and money. Like other students, he started living in a very famous student area called Mahendru. His lodge was Ratan Lodge and he had a family away from home. An owner's wife was treating him like a younger brother. Two floors were there in that lodge. On the first floor, one tenant was living with his family and the ground floor had five rooms, out of which two were for students and three were for owner's family. All were like a big family. He started with taking physics coaching class from one of the very young and dynamic tutors, Mr. Anand Kumar. He was very famous for his unique teaching style, but more apt for IIT preparation. So after attending only three days, he left Mr. Anand's coaching and joined full-fledged coaching classes like Brilliant Coaching Institute, then GMR Coaching. He also enrolled himself for online test series. Life was going on in full swing. Those days, banking system was not very prompt and not everybody had a bank account. So for money, all students were dependent upon money orders or someone coming from the home. Rishabh's father was working in a school and Bihar government was a very bad paymaster. It was a month of October when Rishabh's father told him that his payment had stopped from the government for the last four months due to lack of fund allocation to the education department. So this month he will send money not on 2nd October but on 6th October. He inquired, will you be able to manage? Why not? Yes dad, no issue. Rishabh replied, it's past 10th October. 15th also passed with no clue about the money. Rishabh informed his landlord in advance for the delay in rent payment. But he had to pay daily for his food. And it was 20th October. He only had rupees 10 left in his pocket. One plate rice costed rupees 10 those days. So he had money for only one time food. One packet glucose powder was in the room and nothing else. During lunch time, he was with Shankarji, a friend who was living in the same lodge. They had lunch and Rishabh paid his share of rupees 10, but didn't tell him about anything. In the evening, Shankarji came to his room and asked if he wanted to go out for dinner. But he refused. He told him, Bro, you go ahead. Today I don't feel like having dinner. I will manage. Shankarji left his room and Rishabh started his studies. But empty stomach never allows you to concentrate on any work. That was what was exactly happening with Rishabh at that time. He had no money to pay the bill for his dinner. He even did not know what would happen the next day. This kind of student life teaches you everything. With an empty stomach, you're not able to sleep. And exactly that was happening with Rishabh. He tried to fill his stomach by having glucose powder with water, but failed. 11.30 p.m. The door was knocked. He opened the door and Shankarji was there with one loaf of bread and said, Rishabji, I'm left with one loaf of bread. So I thought why not share this with you? 
What a gesture. This is called understanding. The need without telling. This is called care. Rishabh thanked God for giving him friends like Shankarji. After that small dinner, Rishabh went to bed. And at 3.30 a.m., again his door was knocked. He opened the door and he saw his father standing at his door. He was asking for a change to pay the auto fare. This was a great surprise for him. How come his father was here without any prior notice? He told his father that he doesn't have any change. His father smiled and said, I know you have no money. So how you manage these 21 days? He said, Once one uncle told me, Even if you have everything, try to live life in scarcity. Minimize your want. Prioritize your need. So if you need 10 rupees to live one day, try to make it 8 rupees or less. Apply it to all the resources and you will never be in deep trouble and survive at any diverse condition. I applied this in my life and survived 21 days. That day, Rishab learned the value of money, the power of one rupee and also the meaning of care. If you are right, then God is always with you. You don't need to pray, just do your work and He will take care. Student life of Patna can teach you a lot. Money management, friendship, how to live king-size life in a small room with famous DBC food. The best, most delicious and economical food for students. Dal Bhat Chokha Rashid was preparing for medical entrance exam for the next two years. Coaching, tutorials and tuitions did not help him to bridge the gap and secure the good rank in all those exams. The result was not as per expectation. Time was flying, frustration was gripping. One day, he got the news that his grandfather is no more. That day, he lost his first teacher who taught him to fight, fight against odds and stick on own belief. He went to his native place, a village called Gidhor. The rituals were for 13 days, so he had to be there for 13 days. One day, he saw Lots of villagers, respected people were gathered there. His uncle and father were also there. After seeing him, his uncle's first word was see this guy, clean shaved, no moustache. We cleaned our moustache after our father's death. He did it in his lifetime. Rishabh was shocked that what is this? My moustache is directly related to my father's life, death or respect. The middle class mentality was great. He wanted to say there are lots of people with moustaches doing so many wrong things which bring down the head of their father in the society. In his lifetime, I am at least better than them. Without a moustache, I am at least not causing shame for my father. One day, Rishabh heard a relative talk, something about him. He was very concerned about Rishabh. According to him, he was wasting his time and money of the family and was seriously thinking for him to get placed in fourth grade staff in railways. What a great thought about me! Rishab just remembered that once his late grandfather told him, The day you prove yourself and become successful, then everybody will come forward and give you proof of their association with you. But when you are stumbling, then nobody will be with you to encourage you and provide guidance. So you have to fight your lone battle.
After coming back to Patna, this question was haunted. Am I really wasting my father's money? And time to time, he had to introspect. So he decided to follow his instinct and change his career option. He opted MBA as a future option. But why MBA? Answer of this question lies in part 2 of Straight from Life. End of page number 22. Page number 24. An MBA would guarantee a job. A degree of MBA is a shortcut ticket to success, money and fame. You shake hands with CEOs, attend corporate parties, get to date attractive women and ride in luxury cars. All management graduates from a good B school ended up as millionaires after they pass out. They get seven digit salaries and international placements.